Meanwhile, at Dr. Franz's little apothecary shop, Patrolman Dan Garrett is talking with Dr. Franz while donning his blue beetle chain armor and mask. Doc, I've got a hunch. Has that sailor costume you brought along something to do with your hunch? Yes. I'm going to put it on over my blue beetle costume. Well, what's the idea? Well, I'm convinced that the arson trail leads down by the waterfront. Mm, that's an interesting thought. A fire trail leading to water. <laughs> yes, but nevertheless, that's the way I see it. Well, what gives you the idea the trail leads in that direction? Stumpy's reference to his boss as Skipper, which may mean that Stumpy's been a sailor, or that the head of the arson ring may have headquarters on a ship of some kind. Oh, I see. Also, I learned from Gordon today that naphtha is being used to saturate the buildings before setting them afire. Naphtha is used extensively around ships to remove grease and paint and rust. Well, what are you going to do? Disguise myself as a sailor and see if I can pick up Stumpy's trail in one of the waterfront cafes. Uh, that would be dangerous, Danny. Uh, I love danger, Doc. When it's in the line of duty or part of my crusade against crime. Well, you'd better let me change your face a bit with some makeup. Uh, I'd act a little tipsy if I were you. It would be more convincing. Say, that's a great idea. I'll hide my blue beetle mask until I go into action as the blue beetle. And when I do, some people are going to get a big surprise. What's the matter, sailor? Lost his sweetheart? I'm looking for my friend Stumpy. Lost my pal Stumpy. You know Stumpy? Sure, I know Stumpy. Gotta find Stumpy. What do you want with him? He's gotta give me a job. He's my pal. Said if I ever wanted a job ashore, he'd steer me into a good job. Well, I ain't seen him. Maybe you could find him down at the end of River Street. End of River Street? What's Stumpy doing down there? Sometimes he sleeps on one of the modern reckoning construction company's barges. Oh, that's swell. Promised me a job, he did. I'll go find him and buy him a drink. Or Stumpy! 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 Hello, Gus. This is Maisie. Look, there's a guy coming down there looking for Stumpy. Yeah. Says he's a pal of Stumpy's. Pretending he's drunk. But he ain't. He's cold sober and he ain't no pal of Stumpy. Okay, goodbye. You know Stumpy? One-armed Stumpy Durano? Sure I know him. He's down on the barge there. Come on, pal, let me see you. Oh, that's very kind of you, matey. Why, don't mention it. I'm a seafaring man myself. Uh, seafaring men gotta stick together. Stumpy's a seafaring uh, man. Now watch your step, matey. Uh, we... Yeah, here's the barge. Stumpy will be glad to see an old friend. Oh, you will find him right down there. <laughs> and if he ain't down there now, you can talk to the rats until he comes. <laughs> hey, that's you, Gus? Yeah. What are you doing? I just knocked an old pal of yours into the hole of this gal. Who was he? I don't know. But Maisie phoned. He was asking for you and... Playing drunk up at the cafe. Yeah, probably a dick. Yeah. Well, what'll I do with him? Put the hatch cover on him. Pile some bags of sand on it. I'll go up and phone a skipper at the office. Okay, I'll take care of it. And if this egg in the hole gets noisy, open up the hatch and fill the hole with sand. That'll keep him quiet for a long time. What will happen to the Blue Beetle now? Can he escape from the rat-infested tomb? Or will he be smothered to death by sand? In the meantime, several telephones are busy. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes, you're right. Something should be done about these costly fires. What? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. I'll be glad to serve on the Citizens Committee. Thanks. Anything for the good of the city. Oh, by the way, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to have you and your wife spend the weekend on my yacht sometime. Oh, no, not at all, not at all. It'll be a pleasure. Yes? Yes, all right. Well, just let me know when. Goodbye. Jumpy on the other phone, sir. Hello? Yes? What? Mmm, that sounds suspicious. It may be that patrolman Dan Garrett playing detective. What? Yeah, that's a good idea, Stumpy. Tell Gus to open up the sand elevator and fill the hole. Yes, sink her if necessary. We're insured. I'll meet you out at the yacht in a half hour. Bring Gordon and the girl. If we find out that they've squealed, you'll know what to do. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fran speaking. Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Yes, Danny, yes. I'm talking through my portable wireless telephone. Well, where are you? In the hold of a sand barge at the foot of River Street. Are you in danger? Not yet. Well, what happened? Someone knocked me into the hold, and now they're filling the barge with sand. But, Danny, you'll be buried alive. Now, look, Doc. Telephone the police to come at once to the modern wrecking and construction company's warehouse. I'm in the barge. Tied up to the pier. Hurry, Doc. Hurry. Where are you taking us? Out to the skipper's yacht. Who's the skipper? Don't you wish you knew and could tell somebody? I know who you are and what you do. Yeah, but it ain't gonna do you no good. You'll never tell. What do you mean? The skipper ain't taking no chances on you or your boss there squealing. Hey, Gordon, you awake? Oh. Yeah, he's awake. You'll never get away with this. Patrolman Dan Garrett is on your trail. So you did squeal. That's who the guy was that Gus knocked into the hole of the sand barge. Well, he'll never tell nobody nothing. He's buried alive by this time. Well, that must be the skipper now, on his way out to the yacht. We'll both make it about the same. Yeah. Or maybe it's somebody. Oh, Pipe me. down or I'll slap you overboard. I should have left a gag in your mouth. That's what a guy gets for being sore hearted. Okay, now. Uh, Skipper? Yes. Yeah. Are you coming? Yeah. Keep that girl quiet. Follow me to the yard. Okay, Skipper. Now, just for yelling, I'm going to gag you up again. No, no. <laughs> That'll hold you. very much, Miss Williams and Mr. Gordon, that you saw fit to express yourselves to the authorities to the extent you have. In my business, long tongues mean short lives. What are you going to do with it? My lawyers... Your will... lawyers will assist in settling your estate, Mr. Gordon. Only your heirs will benefit by your long tongue. No. No. You can't mean You'll that... catch will... my meaning very quickly, Mr. Gordon. We're all going for a little sea voyage, but you and Miss Williams aren't coming back. <laughs> The Blue, blue Beetle. Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Stumpy. Don't, don't you? Drop that gun, Stumpy. You might injure the young lady. Why, you... Solomon, I'm sorry. Oh, your whole crew, you murderous arsonist. It won't save you. Your racket is smashed. And your cloak of respectability will no longer shield you. Listen, you guys in the doorway. Don't let this guy bluff you. Grab him. Don't move, any of you. Or I'll blast you with my ray gun. The police will never take me alive. Stop him! Stop the skipper! He's gonna jump over! I live by fire, and I'll die by water! <laughs> How did you escape from the hold of that sand barge? I discovered one of the hatches wasn't tight. So was the hole filled with sand. I climbed up in the sand, raised the hatch, and crawled out. Uh, that was a narrow escape. Yes. 
Well, what did you do then? Well, I heard a girl scream across the water. So I figured it must be Miss Williams' voice. I dived overboard, swam out to a speedboat moored nearby, and climbed aboard. Luckily, I found the ignition key in the switch and started her up. The rest was easy. Drove the boat out to within a quarter mile of the yacht typhoon, dived over and swam out to her. From then on, it was just a matter of getting aboard without being seen. Well, you certainly had an exciting night. Yes, but that's what the Blue Beetle craves. Oh, uh, by the way, Danny, did they find the skipper's body? Not yet. Well, as he said, he lived by fire and died by water. My, my, what a strange epitaph. Yes, but I'd prefer one which would read, Here sleeps the Blue Beetle. He did his job now and rests in peace. And that's just what I'm going to do. Good night, Doc. Nor fire nor flood can turn me from my self-appointed task. <laughs> I'm going to get some sleep. And so the Blue Beetle smashed another crooked racket and chalked up another victory for his crusade against crime. Further adventures of Patrolman Dan Garrett will be presented in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. Copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in. <laughs>